Hey guys, Mr. C here. Uh, in today's video, we are talking about work and power. So when we're thinking about work, you have to ask yourself, what, what is work? And for most of us, when we think of work, we uh, think of, you know, you know, stuff like work, making money, kind of everyday life. In physics language, we think of work as really one thing. We think of it as doing something, moving. Uh, we think of it as pushing an object, causing it to change its motion, or really, uh, we're going to get into it to change its energy. So really, how we're going to define work, we're going to define it as really a force exerted over a distance. Now that distance could be a number of things, and that force could be a number of things. And so really, today's talk is all about that. So first off, a lot of ways you'd be pushing on an object. First off, you could have any box object. You could be pushing on it with some force, and it could be going some distance. And so one of the very first ways we'll define work is simply being the product of a force over a distance. So we're going to use the letter W for work, and we're just going to say it's the force times the displacement of an object. And that works pretty much if you're pushing an object on flat ground, and that push is pretty much in a straight line. Now, what if you're, instead of pushing an object, you decide that you want to lift an object? For example, if you have a barbell, which has a weight of 100 pounds. Well, in order to lift up something that weighs 100 pounds, you know you've got to lose at least 100 pounds of force to lift it up. And really, if the object were to move at a constant speed up, then you know that the force you have to pull has to be exactly 100 pounds, because if it's moving at a constant speed, it must be in equilibrium. So, when you're talking about lifting an object up, the force we're really talking about is the weight of the object. And really, when we're talking about a displacement, we're saying that that object is moving some height, typically, a height h in the air. And so, for work in the vertical direction, we typically say work is the weight of the object, mg, times the height h. So, all right, that, this is work for the vertical. Um, really, though, our general definition, we're going to stick with work as being a force times a displacement, kind of for um, whether it's horizontal or vertical. Um, it's just nice to think about the specific vertical direction. So let's take a look at example. Um, so I'm going to show I'm going to show and talk about uh, at least two examples. The first one is U.S. Olymp Olympic Kendrick Ferris doing a 473 pound clean and jerk, and you're going to look at how he uses the concept of work to think about lifting a weight up in the air. So the weight's about to be lifted off the ground. We're going to go ahead and play it and examine what happens. There's the clean, and here's the jerk, and up in the air. <clears throat> so what you notice throughout the lift is you notice the following. As he's lifting it up, let's see if I can pause back to that spot. As he's lifting it up, he gets to a point where he starts lifting it and exerting some force over a distance. That force is to lift the bar off the ground. Notice, though, as he gets to the lift, he brings his body down. So why would a person bring their body down towards the weight? The reason is he's trying to minimize the amount of work he has to do. Because if he brings his body down, that's the less distance he has to bring the bar up towards the air. So it's less work. And since we know work and energy are kind of really similar things, um, by bringing his body down, it requires less energy and uh, as a result, is able to lift more weight. Awesome. Really, really nice lift. So now, if we go ahead and back to the notes, nope, not those ones. Those are for another day. Another example is simply just pushing a desk or climbing stairs. And so in those examples, pushing a desk, again, when you're pushing a desk, you're applying a force uh, to cause a displacement. And whatever that displacement is, that uh, corresponds to the work. So the last piece is what we measure work in. So what are the what are the what are the unit, units of work? So recall that work is force times a displacement. We know the units of force are newtons, and the units of displacement are meters. So um, in the units we've learned, we, the units of work are newton meters. But because work is such an important thing, and we're going to be talking about it so much, and we've seen this so often in physics, when a unit is so important, uh, we often give it its own name. And so we're going to call a newton meter a joule. And we're going to use the letter J for a joule. So for example, 
Uh, when we're talking about how much work it takes to move a desk across the room, it might be a measurement such as five joules or 10 joules. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is power. And so when you think of power, you should be thinking about, you know, someone being very powerful or someone not being very powerful. Um, and really power is the rate at which work is performed. So whenever you see the word rate, <clears throat> always be thinking in your head, something to do with time. So when we talk about work, we know work has to do with applying a force over a distance. And so when you're thinking about how is someone powerful, you should be thinking about someone or something that's very, very capable of applying a really big force over possibly a very large distance in a very, very, very small amount of time. So we do a small t. And that's what equates to really big powers. And so just kind of talking that, that out, big forces over big distances make big powers. And really doing it fast and small times make big powers. You can kind of see the equation for power come about. And really, uh, we're going to define power a number of ways. Um, the straight definition is power is simply the rate of work divided by time. Now written out in all its number of ways because we already talked about a few equations, we know that that equation can be power is force times distance divided by time. If we're lifting an object in the vertical direction where the force exerted is the weight of the object, we know that power can be mgh, the weight times the height of the object divided by time. And then finally, if an object is being uh, uh, moved at a constant speed. Well, if we know if we know an object is moving at a constant speed, we know <coughs> the distance divided by time gives you the average velocity of an object. And so power can also be computed as being simply a force times a velocity. Okay. So those are those are our equations for power and you kind of get an idea of what, what power means. Finally, uh, what in the world are the units of power? And so power, as we already talked about, is work divided by time. And so given the units we already had, uh, one way to think about power is it's a joule per second. But again, because power is so, so importantly used, we oftentimes uh, see it as another version. And so watt in the world is the unit of power? Well, power is me measured in watts. We typically use the letter W for that. Um, like so. And so when you're thinking of power, you should be thinking like microwaves, light bulbs, etc. Because those kind of give you an idea of power. Because the difference between a 600 watt and a 1200 watt microwave is its power. How much energy it can supply to the food per second. Okay? Really think of power as a rate. Think about it as something happening per second. So where we're going to conclude is we're going to watch two more videos uh, of a powerful object and a not so powerful object. And we're going to kind of compare and contrast why. So the first one we're going to watch is we're going to watch Kendrick Ferris complete a, uh, another Olympic exercise called the snatch, where he simply lifts the barbell up in one clean motion. So here's that. Notice uh, he's using a very large amount of weight. And he's trying to lift it in a very, very fast motion, trying to get it up to the top of his head as soon as possible. So why is that powerful? It's powerful because he's, doing, he's lifting a large amount of weight in a very short amount of time. So here's another video. Here's a deadlift happening. Um, this is actually from the sport of powerlifting. I'm really going to see how, even though the sport of uh, powerlifting, we lift a lot of weight, it's not really the most powerful thing happening. So here, check this one out. Lost my spot. No big deal. There we go. And he is right now starting to lift. And right now the lift is completed. You can see how <laughs> in, that, in that last video, really, there wasn't as much power as the first video, even though he was lifting a considerable amount of weight because it took so much more time, uh, really not a lot of power. Now, what was the second person doing a lot of? He's doing a lot of work because work only cares about the force and the distance. Power, though, it's the rate. Got to consider time when you're doing it. So uh, that's the introduction to work and power. I hope that I gave you guys something to think about, um, helpful review, et cetera, and we'll talk about it in class. Have a great day, everyone.